We're very pleased today to have Mr. Zacharias Kabraev as our introducer on this subject. Mr. Kabraev was just 17 when he fled his home in Atria in 2002 to escape his impending forced military service, and his, last, his journey lasted for four years. He's the author of the book Paradise Denied, How I Survived the Journey from Eritrea to Europe. His book gives a personal account of the situation of thousands of refugees who have no choice but to leave their homes and to risk their lives while hoping for a better destiny for themselves and their family. You might want to get on your headphones because he'll be speaking in German. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zacharias Kebrayeb, and I am a former refugee from Eritrea, and I am now a German resident. I would like to thank you for your invitation here today. I will talk to you about flight. No one is born a refugee. No one wants to be a refugee, but there are many situations in life which offer only one solution, flight. People must flee war, they must flee slavery, persecution, poverty, and hunger. I myself had to flee military service in Eritrea. I was only 17 years old and I didn't want to be in the military. I had other dreams. I wanted to study journalism and to live in freedom. I wanted to decide about my own future, but this was impossible. I had to serve a dictator, and the only solution that I could find to live in freedom was to flee. Fleeing is painful. What it means is that one leaves their homeland, their family, and everything that they hold dear, and everything that is familiar. Being in flight is dangerous, it's humiliating at times, because when you are fleeing something, it means that you are a, a foreigner and you're not necessarily welcome where you arrive. As a refugee, you are really just half a person. And without your papers, you have no rights. You see horrible things. You see women being raped by traffickers in many countries and refugees who are reduced to slavery and who are tortured. Others are kidnapped and they must pay a tremendous amount of money to free themselves. Many refugees are traumatized and need therapy. But when a refugee arrives, in the country of their dreams, they still have not come to the end of the road. That is just the beginning of a long odyssey. Given the Dublin Three Agreement, one is sent from one country to another and back and finds oneself in inhuman refugee camps where one has to wait for years and at times one loses one's hope in the future. Now, I fled into Sudan, then through the Sahara into Libya, and took a boat across the Mediterranean to Italy. In Milan, I was homeless. I lived in the street. It was winter time, and I had to sleep on top of boxes. In Switzerland, my asylum request was refused twice. In Germany, due to my illegal migration, I ended up in prison for administrative reasons before I was expelled. One loses hope during flight, but this is dangerous because it is precisely hope that helps one to remain strong. Hope and faith. Faith in a powerful God provides one with strength. A refugee requires both hope and faith. Many people are in flight today, many from Syria, but also a number from Eritrea. Everyone wants to come to Europe. This is perhaps a problem for Europe, but for these countries, the countries from which people are fleeing, it is a catastrophe. Syria, Eritrea, 
as well as Albania and Iraq, are losing their young generation. These countries are facing extinction, and this makes me very sad. This year alone, more than 800,000 refugees have arrived in Germany. Germany and the entirety of Europe is said to find itself in an unprecedented refugee crisis. I don't think there is any other solution than that of accepting refugees here in Europe because the refugees are not a problem. They are human beings. These refugees need help. They should be seen as human beings and they cannot spend years without prospects for their future and without any residence uh, permits in camps. Refugees must become a part of our society. Refugees do not come to take jobs or to receive social benefits or to weaken economies. Many refugees are professionals or are ready to study. The host countries can take advantage of this new workforce. European countries and the European Union as a whole must find a basic solution to the current crisis. Countries of origin of refugees must become democratized. In order for refugees to live freely in their countries, we must weaken the dictatorships, and those who are fighting for freedom and democracy must be strengthened. Today, I'm no longer a refugee. I am German, and I'd like to show Europe that it is possible to take a step in Africa towards a commitment. I am fighting for a democratic Eritrea. I don't want for my entire country to go into exile and end up in Europe. I would like for the Eritrean people to become free. My message to refugees is as follows. They must not lose hope. They must remain strong. This is the only way that they will be able to arrive at a better future. My message to the European countries is to accept the refugees and not to see them as a problem, but to treat them as human beings and to permit them and their countries of origin to provide them with a future. Thank you for your attention.